Joined now by former Speaker of the House and Trump supporter Newt Gingrich. Thank you so much for your time. I'm glad to be with you. So down the home stretch here, we see Donald Trump campaigning in New Mexico, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, reliably blue states where he's trailing. That suggests he doesn't have a clear path to 270. No, I think just the opposite. It suggests that as the polling shifts, you know, he's up six points on the L.A. Times poll this morning. That's always uh, been a good poll for him. Yes, and it's all, but it also was a very accurate poll in 2012. Uh, so I think if, if he is starting to move, remember that Hillary's going to carry California by a big margin. So if you take that state out of a national poll, if he's up six with California, he's probably up around eight without it. Uh, and that means that lots of states are in play by definition. Uh, these idea of, of blue states and red states and so forth are very dependent on the next election because if they start changing, then they go from blue to whatever. His momentum is certainly undeniable, but there's the fact that more and more states have more and more early voting. In, right. in Colorado, uh, we're all mail-in ballot. Donald Trump came to Colorado and he questioned the integrity of our mail-in ballot system. No proof, just this allegation that it's crooked. I is that fair? It's not fair, but it's a genuine worry across the whole country. I mean, the number of places where we have found people who've been voting 20, 30 years after they died uh, is not trivial. And uh, in some places, uh, Philadelphia is a good example, I think there's a pretty good indication that they steal a lot of votes. So the notion of ballot integrity is not a small thing. And in very close elections, it can make a big difference. Our former Secretary of State, a Republican, went very aggressively looking for voter fraud, found a handful of accidents, and that was about it. Is there danger done to the democratic process, consent of the governed, if people don't believe in the integrity of elections? Sure. And I think that's why it's very important to take steps to make sure that you get an honest, you know, that only people who are allowed to vote vote and that you get an honest count of the people who do vote. I want to play you a clip of something that you said the last time you were here. You were uh, side by side with Howard Dean. You were talking to our Brandon Ritterman, and you said this about Donald Trump. I think he has the biggest upside and the biggest downside of any candidate I've ever seen. If everything works right, he will be an amazing historic figure. If everything works wrong, he'll be worse than Goldwater. So I'm curious, where, where did Donald Trump turn out? Amazing historic figure or worse than Goldwater? Well, I think he's moving towards amazing historic figure. He's, cer he's certainly already going to do dramatically better than Goldwater did. Uh, and the question now is whether or not he can win and whether he can win decisively. Uh, and I think that uh, the combination of his own improvement, I mean, he's much more mature candidate, much more disciplined, using teleprompter to give serious in-depth policy speeches. Uh, those are all good things. His contract with the American voter is a very good idea. His uh, new deal for African Americans is a very good idea. So the positive side of Trump has really improved. At the same time, uh, Secretary Clinton has had a series of revelations, each of which weighs like an anchor carrying her campaign, I think, into deeper and deeper trouble. We've heard from Republicans like Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson who have suggested already prior to Election Day that if Hillary Clinton is elected, she should be impeached. Is that what Republicans should be talking about right now, and is that a serious suggestion? Well, I think it's a serious suggestion that she will have to be investigated no matter what because the allegations, the information is so much corruption from so many different directions that you can't just shove it under the rug. Remember, Richard Nixon carried 49 states and got 60.8% of the vote and left office 18 months later. Uh, so winning the election, if in fact you've done things that are illegal, doesn't protect you from the consequence of having broken the law. And I, I have zero doubt that she has broken the law, and I have zero doubt that there are a number of people around her who have broken the law. Last question for you. I've heard people suggest that if you take Bill Clinton, you can't separate what people didn't like about him from what they did like about him, that often those things were intertwined and overlapped. Is the same thing true of Donald Trump for all the Republicans who wish that he was a more polished candidate or didn't say such inflammatory things? Could those things really be separated out from who he is, or is it all just one package deal? I think it's a, I think it's a package, and I think that, that he's gotten better. I mean, he's the only amateur we've ever seen who came out of nowhere, beat 16 other candidates, got to be the nominee, and is now, you know, has, or has a very real chance to win. Uh, that, that is an extraordinary growth curve over a two-year period. And he's going to make mistakes. He's going to do things that a more seasoned candidate wouldn't do. But on the other hand, 
he has tapped into and responded to an American desire for change that turned out to be dramatically stronger than anybody expected. Are Republicans wrong when they wish for a different candidate at this point in the process? Do they just misunderstand where the it's electorate just, just, is? Well, first of all, 63% of the electorate was mad at the Washington establishment when Trump announced. So he had a potential advantage with 63% of Republicans who, if you showed up and said, hi, I've had a lot of experience in Washington, they said, that's what I was afraid of. I mean, and I think people didn't get it, that the country is really fed up. And of course, all of these new revelations, I mean, I mean, how can you read these things and not be fed up? So I think the level of uh, desire for profound change in Washington is going up, not going down. Former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, thank you for your time. Good to be with you. Thanks for coming by.